So I'm Matt Roberts, and my company is Matt's Personal Training. Uh, I've got these spaces which are one-to-one -one training facilities, gyms in central London, and this one is on Grosvenor Square. We opened about a year ago, and uh, it was apparent that there were potentially some sound issues that um, the building project originally dealt with, um, but were becoming uh, more problematic as time went by. So we needed a solution to try to take away some of the more difficult uh, deep bass uh, vibrations and sounds through the building. Um, so working with Mason was uh, trying to find a, a solution to do that. So putting in a, a sprung uh, floor section within our heavier weighted areas to try and take away that um, was the solution. First thing stage in the process is marking out where all the jacks go. The first step with that is marking the corners. You mark in your corners then you can subdivide the space in between mock out all your lines and what we'll end up with is a grid across the whole floor area showing with a red cross where all of the jacks go. The shape of this one is somewhat unusual because obviously we're doing a sort of horseshoe shape because we're basically working within the constraints and around what was originally put in because they want to preserve this central horseshoe, this central running section. Because the big issue with this project is actually nothing to do with airborne noise. Because when it's in here and they drop weights, because it's a controlled space where they're always working with personal trainers, um, there's not really a huge amount of airborne noise because they're always dropping onto these very thick mats. It's always very controlled movement. But what you've got is even when it's very quiet in the air, you can feel the structural floor moving, and that's the issue they're having. So it's, it's a very nice space, but you've got bare brick walls, bare columns which looks fantastic, but it's very bad acoustically because what it does, that energy goes into the stru structure, resonates straight up through and rattles the floors above. And that's basically the issue they've got. So what this will do is this will allow when a weight drops, there won't be a huge diff ch diff change in the audible noise, but the actual floor will move rather than the floor beneath. That's what we're aiming for. Two ways of building a floor like this are either to fl float the floor on rubber or on springs. Now, rubber is fantastic for audible noise for higher frequency, continuous vibration, that kind of thing. Does a fantastic job with that. But with that sudden bang, the impact that you get, it doesn't do a very good job at all with that because that transfer of energy is pretty much instantaneous. So that's why Springs is the way forward for a job like this. This is one of the spring jacks that get tied on the floor. These get tied into the reinforcing on normally 12 to 1400 mil centers. What you've got, you've got these two little lugs on either side here. So the rebar sits in there like that, with a second rebar on top like that, tying them all into a grid. Then the reinforcing goes around that. So effectively this becomes part of the floating floor. And what you've got inside, rubber cup, which is sized to fit the spring in exactly. And this inner bit here is threaded. So, the idea is, you tie these into all your reinforcing, you pour these, so these are all bang on the surface of the concrete, like that. And then you take out this brass grub screw, once the floor is cured, you remove the lid, you wind the inner casting out, you pop your spring in, you wind your inner casting back in, that lifts the floor up, as you're doing that, lid back on, screw back in, the job's finished. where all of the uh, reinforcing is complete, all of the jacks are in, we have insulation to every upstand, we have protection wherever it's needed and we're ready to pour concrete. Uh, so this stage of the process this is laying concrete in one continuous slab going all the way around and we have two layers of mesh in there. The bottom layer provides the strength in the concrete and the top layer is for uh, crack control. Because the unusual thing about this sort of slab is because it obviously gets lifted up, is essentially it gets loaded from below as well as from above. Hence why two layers of mesh in there is required.
here. We're back here Monday morning, having last Thursday poured concrete. Uh, and as you can see, the, co the concrete was poured to the depth of each casting. Came out looking quite nice and smooth, which is always great to see. The concrete's had a long weekend to a chance to cure and go off, and we can see from a visual inspection now that it looks rather nice and hard, so I'm happy about lifting it. The next stage of the process, as you can see, the guys are just tapping out any little bits of concrete left on top. Uh, basically, we have to tune and match the spring selection to the equipment layout that's going on the floor. I was in consultation with the gym owner again this morning, just confirming the layouts of where everything is going. The reason we have to do that is because we have to make sure that the springs aren't overloaded or underloaded. We have to try and match them as closely as possible to their rated deflection in order that they get the right frequency response. So for example, along this edge here, although it's an edge which will take less load from the concrete, he's reinstating the double dumbbell racks along here. So we're putting in springs that have been reinforced with an inner spring. We are in the process of lifting the floor. We use these nice, sophisticated, waist-high T-wrench screwdrivers. Essentially what we do is we go around across the floor, put them in the hole, and we do two full turns to apply approximately six millimeters of compression. We do that, repeat that process across the whole floor approximately 10 times. Then we'll go in and survey and find our final level, but by the time we finish that process, we'll have an approximately 50 mil lift. So we've left the floor basically in a nice flat and smooth state, ready for the flooring contractor to come back in. They are gonna come back in and relay all this rubber flooring back over the whole area. There's gonna be a trim detail around the edge, just forming a nice aesthetic finish to where we've got the angle at around here. And they're gonna be reinstalling uh, all these pieces of kit. So we've got the, uh, the dual rack at the back there. They're gonna have two squat racks on this side and they're gonna have these uh, dumbbell racks right here, forming along this edge here. Working with building firms in inverted commas uh, is always varied. And um, I can always get a pretty good sniff and whiff of whether the team's gonna be good or not. And there's a degree of care and diligence over site preparation um, and uh, expertise in terms of just conversations we've had over a period of months now about this project where I just know that uh, Mason know what they're doing. 